Okay, let's start talking a little bit about Newton's first law. We know Newton's first law says something like this. An object in motion tends to stay in motion, an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by a net external force. And hopefully I didn't forget any words. So, what do we mean by in motion in this case? Or, I mean, so at rest, hopefully we know what that means. In motion, maybe a little ambiguous. Turns out the real way to talk about in motion really talk, tends to talk about linear momentum. But we'll table that for now. We're going to say in motion tends to mean velocity. So if you're in motion and you're staying in motion, then your velocity is unchanging. So in motion, staying in motion is telling us that V is constant. So same speed, same direction, same velocity. So another way we could say this is that an object in equilibrium will not accelerate. Equilibrium we will take to mean no net force will not accelerate, which we know what this means. It means no change in velocity. Now we'll talk about some more exciting cases of this later on where you can have you know your motion looking like it your you know your velocity changing but your speed not changing and things like that but for now no net force no change in velocity that's basically what we're getting for so what kinds of forces are we dealing with there are a few standard simple kinds in general a force is a push or a pull Sometimes we're going to really stretch the definition of a push or a pull, but generally all of these are something pushing on something. And so every force we can write down as some force F on A by B. So for example, um, if I punch a turkey, It's a, you know, totally a turkey. Just, just in case we're clear later on, this is a turkey. Um, bam, punching. And there is some force on the turkey by me. So every force is going to kind of look like this. There are some very common kinds of forces, though. Um, first one, Fg, G for gravity in this case, which is going to be weight, so, you know, by gravity. And this is the force on an object by the Earth. And we mean the whole Earth, not just like the ground beneath you. We're going to have Fn, which we're going to call the normal force, which is a lot more reasonable than the abnormal force. And this is really related to if you have a surface. So for example, if I have a box sitting on a table, and there is a force on the box by the table, and we would call this the normal force. Normal has a technical definition where it means perpendicular to, and that's kind of where this comes from, but you know, we'll worry about that later. Um, you'll have FT, which will be a tension. And this is if we have ropes. So if I have, you know, a giant bag of money, which is held by a rope, um, then there is some tension on the bag by the rope, which we call, I've already said it's a tension, so I kind of gave away the punchline there. Um, let's see, those are kind of the three big ones. We talked about generic 
push and pulls just on A by B. Uh, and I guess the last one we got to worry about is friction. So friction is the kind of thing where you know it slows down. So if we have uh, what do we want sliding here? How about a iPhone? That's totally iPhone isn't capitalized. Whoops. An iPhone sliding along the table, and there is some force on the phone by the table, um, and this is going to be friction. Now we need to be careful here. This is where things get weird. The force on the box by the table is up. That's why it's a normal force. The force on the phone by the table, assuming that the phone is moving to the right, this force is to the left. Friction is always going to oppose motion. So friction acts along a surface. Um, but the normal force acts perpendicular to surface. All right, one more thing to talk about and then you're free to go back to your daily lives. When we want to represent forces, we're going to use what we call a free body diagram. The idea of a free body diagram is that we take a big thing like say a uh, giraffe giraffe uh, and we take this giraffe and we're going to just smush it down to a point We're going to draw all the forces acting on the giraffe, acting on this one point. So for example, the giraffe has some weight, so there's a force of gravity. The giraffe is apparently on a surface, so there's a normal force. Maybe the giraffe is being, you know, pulled along by um, a monkey who has like a little giraffe harness thing kind of set up here. Giraffe harness. It's important to label your diagrams, by the way. So there's maybe some force on the giraffe. Oh, so I guess actually, we know it would be if there's a rope here, and that's a tension. And then maybe there is some friction, because, you know, the ground is rough or something. We're going to draw these arrows in the direction of the force. And we're going to try to make sure that the arrow size is related to the size of the force, or proportional to. And if we look and we ask, is there a net force? In other words, are these forces balanced? Well, if we look, these are about the same size, so it's balanced up and down. But if we look here, this is pretty small, this is pretty big. So not balanced left, right. And if the forces are unbalanced, this is where we're coming back to this idea of equilibrium. So another way of saying equilibrium is that we have balanced forces. Or in another way, the way to think about this is that if we have unbalanced forces, then we have a net force. That is what a net force is. takes a long time to write, turns out. 
So if we look at this, balanced force is up down, so the draft is not f accelerating up or down. It's not flying off into the air at an increasing rate or dropping towards the center of the Earth at an increasing rate. But the left-right forces are unbalanced, so it is accelerating and is accelerating to the right. So now we're going to do some work in class over the next couple of days, uh, drawing free body diagrams. We need to figure out, whenever we look at something, we have to ask, are the forces balanced? And then we need to make sure that our free body, free body diagram matches that. So when we draw a free body diagram, that can tell us if the forces are balanced, or if we look at the description, we should know if we should draw balanced forces. Okay, that's about it. Have a good night.